Welcome to our lecture online. One of the most interesting and fascinating aspects of the four Galilean moons is their orbit synchronization. It's absolutely phenomenal. So let's take a look at it and let's go through it very slowly because it's a bit complicated. So we have the four Galilean moons. The inner moon is Io, the second moon is Europa, the third moon is Ganymede, and the fourth moon is Callisto. Now it turns out that Europa and Io are in a two-to-one synchronization, which means that for every one trip of Europa around Jupiter, Io takes two trips, and they meet opposite to one another at the same time once every orbit of Europa. So when Europa does one orbit around Jupiter, Io does two, but they always meet on the same side every two Io orbits or every one Europa orbit. Then it turns out that Ganymede's orbit, so this is Ganymede, let me put the word Ganymede there. Ganymede has a four to one synchronization with Io. So for every one trip around Jupiter for Ganymede, Io takes four trips. Now notice they don't all meet at the same side at the same time. So what you can see here, uh, and then also I need to mention that if Ganymede has a 4 to 1 synchronization with Io, it will have a 2 to 1 synchronization with Europa. Now notice that Europa and Ganymede will be together here on the other side of Jupiter once every orbit for Ganymede. Europa will take two orbits, but they will meet at the same time here. But at that time, Io will be on the opposite side. So we have Europa and Ganymede on one side, and Io on the other side. And so I have that indicated with these three arrows right here. So we have Europa and Io, they'll be on the same side once every Europa orbit, as Io goes around twice. So that means that Io will be up here, Europa will be down there. And then Io will be up here, Europa will be back up there. So that happens every one Europa orbit for two Io orbits. Then we see a two to one synchronization between Ganymede and Europa. So every time Ganymede gets to this point, Europa will be here as well. But when Ganymede is over here, Europa will be down here. So it, let's see, one, yes. Yeah, so for every two orbits of Europa, Ganymede will go one orbit. I'll take that back so for one orbit for Europa, Ganymede will go a half orbit. So Europa, Ganymede will be here, and Europa will be here, and Io will be there. So it's kind of complicated. And then to make it even more complicated, now we have Callisto and Ganymede have a 7 to 3 orbital relationship. In other words, for every 7 trips of Callisto, Ganymede will make 3 trips. So there's only an occasion where Callisto and Ganymede will be on the same side, and that will happen after three Callisto orbits and seven Ganymede orbits. So when Ganymede comes around, one point Ganymede will be over there, and Callisto will be over there. That's after three orbits of Ganymede, and uh, three orbits of Callisto, and seven order orbits of Ganymede. So a little bit complicated. So again, let's review. So you have Io going around. For every two orbits of Io, Europa will go around once. For every four trips of Io, Ganymede will go around once. For every three trips of Io, Callisto will go around 28 times. And that will just continue on. Now because of that, there is several outfalls from that. For one thing, it keeps the moons in very nice very low eccentric orbits. In other words, the orbits of the four moons are nearly circles, slightly off from being circles, and that's because the gravitational forces and pulls of the moons being in that synchronization keeps them right on the path they need to be. If that wasn't the case, the orbital, the, the, um, the bulge of Jupiter caused by the gravitational attraction of the moons, since Jupiter re revolves around its axis so quickly, the bulge will get ahead, it will pull on the moons, it will cause the moons to accelerate. And so if that was the only force acting on it, just like 
the Earth act, the Earth's bulge acts on the Moon, it causes our Moon to accelerate, and as it accelerates, it moves farther and farther away from the Earth, and slowly the Moon will pull away from the Earth. That's not going to happen for the moons of Jupiter because of the strong tidal interaction between the four moons. It keeps them in nice, nearly circular orbits. And secondly, it also keeps them in place. So it prevents the bolts from pulling them faster because the gravitational forces between the moons prevent that from happening and so they stay in this nice synchronization. So it's quite interesting that that's what's happening. Again, for every two orbits of Io, Europa orbits once. For every four orbit, orbits of Io, Ganymede orbits once. And for every 28 orbits of Io, Callisto orbits three times, and that's the orbital relationship between these moons. <laughs> Is the error just slightly off? Well, it's not exactly, exactly, exactly. It's not exactly two to one down to so many decimal places. There's slight difference in the orbital period, but they're very close, and they are always keeping. They're always being pulled back to that two to one, four to one, uh, and twenty-eight to three relationship. It'll be like this forever. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Our moon will not do that. Our moon is slowly moving away at about three point something centimeters every year. So if it wasn't for the other moons checking, it would do the same thing? That's correct. If it was only one moon and the other three weren't there, that moon would do exactly the same as our moon would do. It would speed up and would slowly pull away from Jupiter.